Hello everyone. Uh, so today I'm going to walk through with you um, uh, how to install uh, Omi's app uh, on your on your own machine on your own computer uh, to allow you to do front end development for Omi. Uh, front end development means basically uh, changing the the app functionality um, and accessing like whatever we already have in the back end, uh, and then. You can technically also like submit changes to the app and do help us develop uh, the open source OMI, OMI app. Um, this is uh, slightly different than like doing the backend development, uh, which we'll do a tutorial about as well. Um, so for this tutorial, uh, this app setup, uh, we're going to use OMI's official uh, development backend. So a backend that we deploy ourselves specifically for developers like yourself um, who wants to start contributing to his own, own repository. So what we need to have already on our uh, computer, so we need to have Flutter SDK, Dart SDK, Xcode, if you are um, if you want to, to see your changes for iOS, Android Studio, if you want to see your changes for Android, CocoaPods for iOS dependencies, and NDK, which is uh, like the development kit for, uh, for Android. Um, I'm not going to uh, install everything with you right now. I'm just going to show you how to have how to make sure you have everything that is needed already in your computer. Um, you have links to all the downloads here. Um, each that each need to be uh, installed slightly differently, whether or not you are using Mac OS, Windows, or Linux. Um, I will provide those links in the description as well. But in short, to make sure we have Flutter installed, we can do Flutter version. And, and see a web version of Flutter. We can also see dot, it, dot, dot. We can do dot version as well, I believe. Yeah. Um, to make sure we have pods, which is Cocoa Pods, uh, because I'm going to show you today how to do this for uh, for iOS. But it's basically the same thing for uh, for Android pods. Okay, I have pods, and make sure. Make sure I'm going to. I mean, I I have the Android SDK. Um, I have Android SDK, and I also have the Android. The Android SDK is essentially the, and then the K essentially are being installed. Uh, I think by default when you install Android Studio. Uh, so I have all of the things, um, which means I can move forward. Uh, in this case, uh, I have the Omi Omi repository installed, which if you haven't done this before. Basically, git clone and then the repository of OMI, which is here. Git install this this line. Cool. Um, okay, before we continue, like just like for you, if you haven't uh, done anything with the OMI repository before, um, this is this is the files we have uh, in the OMI folder. We have a lot of things that are going that are going on here. We have the backend folder, uh, we have friend folder, which is the the firmware uh, and the like everything that's related to the hardware part of the of the friend necklace. Uh, same for open glass, so everything that relates to open glass hardware stuff, the firmware, the maybe the CAD designs for the three D stuff. So all of those things are irrelevant. For iOS case today, uh, the things we most interested in is the app folder. Um, so the app folder is uh, that what is what holds the mobile app, uh, which in our case is a uh, Flutter. So it's a cross platform. It's called. Um, so if we go to the uh, app folder and we list everything we have here, uh, we have a lot of things that are related to Flutter. Um, and we have like an Android folder and an iOS folder, which be which both of them will be relevant later like later on in this tutorial, like in five minutes. Um, and okay, so this is basically the environment that we have and need to have before we continue. So we talked about what we need to have to be installed. Um, to build the app locally, you have two approaches. One is to build it automatically. Which is this this section? Um, building automatically essentially means uh, using our own like Omi's official development backend. Um, that means you don't need to care too much about 
Firebase, a backend, users, authentication, all of those things, you just connect to our backend, um, which makes everything much easier to set up. And there's also like the build the app manually, which walks through how to build the app um, with your own backend. Uh, so you need to you need to provide the API, API URL yourselves. So you need to connect to Firebase, which is very useful if you uh, want to use your own backend, for example, or you are um, uh, making changes to the backend as well as the frontend. And we will we walk through this section uh, in a different tutorial. Uh, in this in this tutorial, I just want to go through the app, building the app automatically, which is what you need to do if you want to make changes to the frontend and then apply the changes to to the to the main repository. Okay, so we did this. We switched the repository to the, the folder to app. So if you can see in our terminal, we are already in Omi's app folder. Um, and as I said, we have this setup.sh file, um, which you can see here. So if we look at that file, um, you can see that it is doing a lot of things. Um, it tells us what the, the dependencies are and how to use it. It, set up the, it sets up the API URL to the one that I mentioned earlier. It downloads the default Firebase authentication files uh, for our development backend. All of those things you can like you can go through and and dive into, and we explain them a bit more in the build the app manually section. But essentially, all we need to do as front end developers um, is to run bash setup.sh, and then depending on the platform that you want to develop to, uh, iOS or Android. When I mean, when I say depending on the platform we want to develop to, most of the changes, because it is Flutter, most of the changes are like the same. They will apply to iOS and Android as one. But when we developing and we want to see like progress of like the, th the changes that we're making uh, to the code, we want to see how they actually look like on the phone. We need to build the app, uh, rebuild the app every time and, and then install the new uh, app on, on a device. So in this case, I'm going to build the app to an iOS device. Uh, cool, and it runs a lot of things, but one thing I did not mention is that if you're doing that for Xcode, you also need to have like Xcode installed on your on your Mac, uh, which I, I, I do have it. If I do have it somewhere, I will open it in a second. So it run, runs a lot of things and hopefully it will not fail. Cool, it succeeded. And then I can open Xcode. It will take a moment. And in Xcode to, to open the, the iOS version of our app, but again, because again, we are using Flutter. So we write run code, one code um, that can be built, can be compiled to both Android and iOS. So the compiled code of the iOS app is going to be in Omi app and then iOS. So this is the code for the iOS. We don't need to look at the code here because it's something that Flutter creates uh, itself uh, for most for most cases. Uh, but we need to open this file in VS Code. So I, to, I want to open again developer Omi app iOS. I will open the code. It will load a lot of stuff. It will make sure um, it will like index the, the file system. And here we go. Uh, depending on how often you do that, um, I think first round of the day or like every once in, in, every once in a few days, it's a bit longer than expected. Um, but in the next iteration, a bit later, it will be much faster. So let's wait for a second. In a bit. In the meantime, I'll, I will explain you a little bit about um, the VS code, the Xcode uh, interface. Again, most of it is irrelevant because we like you just needed to build uh, the code for iOS. You don't really need to develop in here. But we have the app here that will be automatically uh, loaded, and then we have like devices 
we can like this is like simulators devices we can actually spin up and if you have like a real iphone you can also connect your iphone to the computer uh, and enabling like developer settings and it should uh, you, you should be able to like install like the omi dev app on your phone as well so for example i have two omis app one the real one that is connected to the real backend and the one that i installed for development that is connected to develop to the, to the development backend anyway it's finished build uh, it's finished then i'm going to choose like iphone 15 pro just because it's the one i usually use and all you need to do is like build that's literally all, everything so it will take a bit a lot of warnings it's fine um, if you have issues or bugs, obviously feel free to open uh, issues or questions either in the Omi's Discord channel or in uh, or in the GitHub issues section. Um, yeah, so it's built a lot of stuff. It will take one sec. Build succeeded, it opens the iPhone and it will automatically install a new version. Which also takes a few seconds to load up. Um, in my case, I think I already logged in. So it will automatically log, uh, log, log me in, yeah, as I envisioned, yeah. So what I can do instead, just to show you the flow, I can remove up, which will uninstall everything. And then if we run it again, it will walk me through the onboarding flow. So you can actually, you can do that too. Yeah, build succeeded. Now it was much faster because it indexed most of the files. Yeah, so now it, uh, I'm logged out. So I, I need to do the onboarding flow. Adam, continue. Continue allow. Allow was in the app. Blah blah blah. Continue. Anyway, cool. Let's just finish it. Connect my friend. I don't have a friend with me, so let's skip it. And as you can see, because we are using Flutter, we also have like this debug flag here, uh, which is really useful. Um, because sometimes Flutter shows you um uh UX issues like uh, user interface components that are not entirely configured correctly. So I think in this case, you see these small like issues here. This thing is actually show tells us there, there is a problem in this UI component, uh, which we should fix probably um, here as well. I think the problem is that the name is too long, so those two UI components are collapsing. So if one someone wants to pick this ticket and fix it. Uh, that would be good. Um, okay, so we have the app. Uh, everything good, looks good. Now let's do a small change just to see that we can like see the changes. So before we make before we make the changes, just like a be uh, a known uh, how to how to contribute code to Omi, you usually need to create a fork of the GitHub repository, clone that repository make your changes and then do a, a fork merge. But in my case, uh, which I think can actually work for other people as well, I'm not sure the configuration of the repository, I'm just going to create a new branch. So git checkout, uh, checkout minus B, which is a new branch, add um, do show casing, good stuff, amazing stuff. It will create me a new branch, and now I can make changes. Okay. Let's see. So just for the case of showing, let's let's change the text. No memory is generated yet. So if I look for no memories. You can change it. I think it's super cool. And that's it. Now, nothing will happen because we need to build the app again. So for that, we can uh, run the back script again. Oh, now I'm in the iOS folder, so I need to go back to the previous folder and then run this, which will take a few seconds. I think this time should be faster.
you actually, I'm not sure you need to run the setup every time, actually. Um, you might just need to build this from the VS Code, to echo from S Code, but anyway. Now we build this again, so click build, which will kill the existing instance of the app and we'll, create, we'll run in, like a new instance, um, which is the equivalent of updating an app. Uh, yeah, cool. And now we see our changes. Adam is super cool. Um, and yeah, you can basically create, this way you can create uh, new features, changing the user interface. You can create new apps. Um, because because you, in the front end, you do have access to the backend, yeah? You can access to the backend. Um, in this case, it's a completely new user. So I don't have any memories, but I think I can maybe uh, fake, fake some memories. Um, yeah, that, that's my need. Let's do the same thing for Android, maybe. Saving for Android, just like set up Android, which should do, uh, we'll fetch the, the key store. Android is much faster. We can open Android Studio. Um, for Android Studio, oh, it opened the, the one automatically, but basically you need to open, uh, Basically, to open instead of uh, app iOS, you need to open app Android, and then you can run the simulator on an iPhone as well. So that's basically it. Um, how to start uh, coding your front end, uh, coding uh, Omis front end in your on your own local local uh, computer. Um, I a few days ago created a whole new apps page. Um, yeah, so here in app libs pages, you can see uh, the pages that we have, the apps pages, the chat, uh, you can ch change it. Let's see what else we can change. I don't know. Um, yeah, this is a pop-up. I'm not sure where is it happening. Let's see. I think this is maybe this pop-up. Um, I'm not sure which one is this one. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, okay, uh, in in the future tutorials, we will show how to change widgets and create new pages even, or fix bugs. Um, but now that we have um, the the local environment uh, set up, we can easily like try to change stuff and see how they affect the real code. Um, but let's say the changes that we've made, um, this small change, uh, no. This small change is something that we do want to do to send. We can do um, stage, then add a commit message, hello world, so commit it. And now we can technically push it. Oh, upstream, we need to do upstream. I have some shortcut, shortcut commands that you won't have. Git push. And now if we go to the GitHub, we should be able to see um, the new uh, branch. And then, hello world. Here you should explain what this is doing. Add some reviewers. And now we can wait for someone to approve our changes, essentially. Um, I'm going to delete this because this should not exist as a PR. I'm going to remove it. Close book. Cool. Um, and yeah, other than that, if you have issues or experiencing issues with um, installing your local setup, um, you can find an issue here or probably better go to the Discord channel. Uh, we should have a link here. And yeah, and ask questions. Um, stay tuned to future tutorials on how to make more changes to the front end and hopefully for the back end as well.